Chris Pilling is back with us. Turn around and say hello, Chris. Hello. We have decided to move those uh, fuel pumps to make a little more room there for electrical stuff. Chris is an electrician. And oh my God, am I glad he's here because just knowing the names of this stuff is insane. We've been shopping this morning at Home Depot, Lowe's, uh, and a couple of electrical supply houses and have this stuff. You know, they're boxed, they're all plastic boxes, but they have ports in different locations and he just sees this stuff in his head. Hey, what's this, an FSC? Is that what you call this thing? CC. Uh, an FSCC, okay. Three quarter inch. So the first step was we went around the boat and put these pieces of tape on. So that means it's a two gang box with a three way, I don't know what the P means, and there's an outlet there. So around the boat with all of those as to where we'd want plugs and switches. And if I was doing this without Chris, I think I would print off a page that has all these different types of boxes on it. Lots of pages of them. Cut them out and tape to the wall the fixture that I wanted to go in that location and then go around and make a list of I need so many of these and so many of those. Then I'd take the little pictures and the count to each of the stores because we had to go like, oh, literally three different places just to get this much and there's rest more of it on order. But if you have an electrician friend, get your electrician friend. They just look at this stuff and say, oh, I'll do this, this, and this. Works very fast. You can see outlet, outlet, outlet. Uh, some of this stuff is actually hardwired in like for the cat motor. And then we'll try and give you a little more description about the GFI circuit breakers that are going in and the panel going in. We didn't get a panel yet. No, we didn't get a panel yet. Okay, that's still on the list. We're not going to use the first the panel we've had in here. As it turns out, this one's just not big enough. We need bigger. And the other thing about having a friend that's an electrician is he will have a bunch of cable and wire. Like this stuff down here on the floor is four rot and it's expensive and he has stuff that can do that. And so it minimizes how much you'll have to actually buy. And I don't even know what this thing is. I, you know, it wouldn't go in if it was left up to me because I don't know where the hell it's going. So my job is to build a bracket for those fuel pumps so they can move to a new home. Expensive, but fun. We're back from our friends over at Radiarc with uh, some used 4 aught. This is the big welding cable that will drive power from our batteries to our inverters through a circuit breaker. Compression lugs. Compression lugs, why? Right, because you don't like soldering them on. No. Okay. 120? Mm -hmm. And that's a foot control? Mm hmm. Nice, and you say you don't have to have dies for it. Yeah, it's dialless, so any size will fit. Yeah, these say they cut four out. They do not cut four out. They won't even start to cut this. Just like that, it just pinches it over. Where'd you get these, and what kind of brand are they? They're Greenly. Yeah. And any of the electrical wholesale houses. 60 bucks. So there's an example where you want to buy the better tool. Greenly. Navigation rules and regulations handbook. Is this what you call the rules of the road book? Yeah. This is the charts for the That's river. The Arkansas chart, and then this is the oh. lower Mississippi River oh, chart. That one I don't have. Well, you can have that one, because they don't can, make it anymore. Well, why would you give me something they don't make anymore? Well, because you're going to need it more than I do, because I have it on the computer. You oh. can download the PDF version. I've seen the PDFs, but yeah, having it on papers. Yeah, good. It's got some notes in there, but most of these notes aren't going to be any good to you because they're for a uh, a big toe. Yeah, it's a little more draft than I, I have. Well, a and lot more width and length. Yeah. Brandon here is a push boat pilot on the, you mainly do the Upper Mississippi? The Upper Mississippi River, the Arkansas River, the Illinois, and the Ohio. The Arkansas is what I like hearing. Yeah. Yeah, so 
our guide down the river. NB. Oh, northbound. northbound. Yep. Don't make turn from under point, yep. come out off point, and come back to it. Mm -hmm. that, that means something to you, I guess. Yeah. So this is the point. Yeah. You don't want to come up the shoreline and make the turn. You want to come out and around. Because if you come up, as soon as your head gets pointed, uh, as soon as your head, all the all your water's running down this point, yeah, you're hitting so, this bank here and coming down. So, you so as soon as your head then gets up, push here, you into the shore if you don't start making that turn soon. Yeah, it'll top you around. So the problem is, is with these big toes, when you come around that point northbound, if you don't already have your turn started when you're when you're clearing that point. Oh, so it's saying make the turn early. Yeah. Oh. Because if you don't if you don't already have your head swinging, as soon as that current hits you. It's going to start pushing you onto that bank, right? And then when you try to uh, to steer it around, you could potentially snap your toe in half and, and cause some damage to <laughs> some stuff. Uh, it's not good. Okay, so when we're going down the river, you're going to be learning a lot more from Brandon and other folks like him. Thank God, won't be me. Oh, look at that burnt copper look. Man, that is old. Yes. <laughs> That's pretty on the inside still. Heard it click. Too much light. And it's done. Cool. So it just puts a couple of divots. Oh no, it goes all the way around. It goes all the way around. But the hammer on one just puts just the divots puts on the top. On the top. Yep. And you like them just as well? They just, work. Just more work. They work. They're not ideal. Yeah. This fully compresses that lug. Yeah, that is, that is on there really good. Yeah. Beautiful. Batteries. Uh, going trucks? Yep. And they got, what do they, what do you say, about 1100? 1100 at zero, 1355 at 32 degrees Fahrenheit. Lovely. So I'm thinking we got this box like somewhere right down in there. Yeah, I like it out here because then it could be used in the companion way here. Or... Yeah, so then that 90 is going to bring you right across to there. All right, we're going to get you a piece of pipe and. And then it'll be a 90 and then some weird bend. Do you there. want me to find a piece of pipe? I'm just working it. <laughs> Okay, we're getting the conduit put in. We got 90s up here and we just heated up a little bit more because this is actually more than 90. It's a boat, right? There's no such thing as a 90. Then the junction box here, we're going to come in back behind the lights and stub down the wall for each box. And Chris has fancy gadgets for bending. It's actually a hot blanket. Oh man, that is hot. And he says when it gets floppy, it'll be ri- Ow, mother, that's hot. Is it good? I don't want to touch it. <laughs> Yeah, it's gonna work. It's gonna work. No, it's not. Not enough it's, right there at the it's, end. It's bending. It's bending way back here. But not. Uh, yeah. Did you guys try the blanket? Yeah. Well, yeah, we do. Gotta let it heat up harder. Let it heat up till it's a fucking wet noodle. Oh, you, can you said it. smoke is smoked. Yeah. Well, oh, yeah, you'll see a little a wet bit of smoke. noodle here, but not. But look at it. Oh, you gotta stick it all the way down at the end where you want to heat it. Oh. Well, I thought all the right. whole blanket. I thought the whole thing got it. It does. Right in the middle. So this was supposed to be gummy colos. We're going to lunch. Don't spoil that's, your lunch. Yeah. Didn't your mother Apparently teach you it all anything? melted into that's, one block. That's gross. That is it's sick. It's still really good. That's disgusting. Did you unplug this? Yes, I unplugged it. For Jeez. crying out loud. Oh, you here, got gloves look, on. Yeah, well, here. of course. You you told me to put gloves on for yeah, crying out loud. Yeah, took the hot end. He was a smurf for crying out loud. You can plug it in now. Oh, that's not smoking enough. No, you'll, you'll see rolling smoke. Oh, well, you didn't say you that. Didn't you say said rolling you smoke. Maybe not rolling smoke, but you'll see smoke. Don't don't let it go on fire. That happens too. Fire bad. Oh yeah. Fire. Unplug. Unplug. All right. Did you get it? Unplug. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Here, maybe get you some zip ties. Okay, we're making a little progress here. Doesn't that look pretty? Nice bent plastic pipe. We didn't even use the 90, so Chris is happy we used a 90 down there. Shh, don't tell him. Oh, he's working on the fuel return line from the engines. It'll go into there and then it runs up and dumps into the top of the tank. As long as that valve below it is turned off. Those of you that thought the number of valves was confusing on the water maker, you're, you're not going to like the fuel system anymore. So what we got is uh, three valves going to return fuel to the tank from the engines and three valves going out to fuel the engines. 
So if you're new to diesel engines, fuel flows to them, a pump picks it up, pressurizes it really heavy, the injectors use some of it, and then what the injectors don't use, return to the fuel tank, so you always need a return line on diesel engines. So we're looking at main engine supply, 10K generator supply, 8K generator supply, and then the same in returns. And then we can shut one engine off completely if we take it out of the boat. End of the day, and this conduit is not hard to put in. I'm just kind of surprised how fast this went, you know, and just heating it up and getting it bent to where you want it to go and down the cable tray and down both sides. He's working in the forward cabin there. All right, you're not going to, what are you going to, you're just going to run wire up in there, right? Yeah, we're going to put on cord grip so it seals it good. Yeah, since it's in the shower. And there's the plug for the bathroom. So we'll finish this out tomorrow and finish out the uh, engine room. Oh, look at that glow. Yeah, beautiful sunset. For industrial crimped on couplers. And all of this is going through that pipe right there back into the engine room. Okay. Too easy. So how much does rig cost? Two grand. <laughs> easy. Okay. Nice. It's pretty. Nothing will be level. Nothing will be square. Yeah. That is nice. I might get me one of these. 250 bucks for the kit. So you can't, you can change that out. What is it, got an Allen wrench down there? Yep. Okay. And no, you can't just take a regular drill bit and grind the flat on there. That doesn't work very well either. Okay. Have you tried it? Yes, I've tried it. Heating it up works. Charm. A four by four. Four by four. Gutter. Wonderful. Instead of bringing it into the top of the box, it just gives you a lot more room to do it. And we put extra holes in there so we expand in the future. Family. <laughs> yeah. Family friendly jokes now, okay? <laughs> Look how pretty that is. Oh, yeah. A piece of toast, some bacon, and an egg walk into a bar. Yes. The bartender goes, whoa, 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 whoa. We don't serve breakfast here. <laughs> no, it was very funny. No, the other one was funny. To buy one of these at the Electrical Wholesale House is $250. What did we pay for it? $25 on Amazon. I love Amazon. This is a uh, ratcheting crepe. Right. Go ahead. Give, yeah. it a, give it a Hey. Nice. And this is our hammer crimper. It came in too. That is a simple little booger. It's got, what is it, it got a spring in it? Yeah. Oh, it does. It has a spring to hold it tight. So we're going to yeah, test the like hammer that. crimper with these big lugs. Ah, barely <laughs> fits. Four on. And then you back it up and do it again. It's just barely fits four on. See, that's not a bad crimp. For $19.99. I think it's beautiful because that goes on a boat easily. From number eight, apparently to four out. The stuff we're showing, I have links in the description to our affiliate on Amazon, which just means that Amazon gives us a kickback if you buy through our affiliate link. And you know, you can buy this and then you go buy a car and we get that too. So thanks for helping us out. They probably have something like that in four wheel drive. They have a 250cc dirt bike for 1500. Yeah, it's pretty weak oh, well. Yeah, it's weak well. Style points. We got eight corn nuts. Okay, more of the wiring is coming along. The big stuff goes in first. And we'll pull the rest of it in. 
about being an electrician, he didn't like the way the uh, inverter cooktop is wired up, so we're going to rewire it for 240. So it's a three burner induction cooktop, and from the factory, it just comes with two plugs, you know, one for two separate circuits if you could do it. But we can do that with 240, and then we avoid the GFIs, right? Get rid of the GFI breakers. Save some money. So that's just the top that goes on it. It's a real simple thing. Got a little bit of heat transfer back there for the thermostats. Neutral. Which one's neutral? The whites. We'll tie the two whites together, bring in one neutral. Right. And then we're going to bring in two hots. One hot will go there, one hot will go there. And then we'll have a standard uh, 30 amp plug this pin will go in the place of this one right and most induction cooktops nowadays are 30 amps at 240 right so if we ever do need to replace the cooktop easy to get the new 240 volt cooktop right the Chinese aren't very good about putting in ground so we're gonna add a ground so 120 volts 120 volts the ground and the neutral GFI breakers Lots of them. Everything that's uh, so. We, what do we do up here? We did the motors, and the um, uh, the welding circuits, and, and uh, the battery charging circuits, and inverter inputs from the solar. Yeah. And our uh, and our generator inputs. Right. Our backfed breakers. But everything that has an outlet. All of the receptacle. all the 120 volt receptacles will all be GFCI protected at the panel. Right. And then we've got our lighting circuits, which are going to be 15 amp circuits. And then we've got our bilge pumps, 120 volt bilge pumps. Right. And then the rest of it's all just for uh, 120 volt uh, lighting circuit or 120 volt outlet circuits. And with room to spare. With room to spare. So we still got to get our lighting circuit down this pipe after, but this is going to get us all of our outlet circuits. So you're going to pull ground. wire in and then pull more wire in? Yeah, because I don't want to stretch wire out. It's easier just to pull it in place. I won't. To the same That's not that hard to do. No, we got fish tape down in my game box. Okay. Can we go get it? Oh, let's start pulling wire. So, I'm going to push this to that T. Yeah. When I get to that T over, I got this. I'm working past the T. Uh, yeah, just get it straight past. Once I get it past that T, we're going to go down to the, uh, the far box. Is right. it through there? Uh, yeah. yeah, there you go. go so on. Keep going through there. Oh, wait a minute. Now, go. Okay. No, and we want to have a good six inches extra in the... Uh... So this is for the plugs and the lighting comes in next. Right. And you want six inches hanging out the box. At least. Six to nine, something like that. Why are you cheap unless you're short? All right. Okay. Okay. That's fine? That's it. All right. So what we're going to do now is we're going to group our wires. Because we're using GFCI breakers for everything, we need to make sure we keep our hots and our neutrals separate. So in this case, we're going to go with gray and red is one group. We we'll just use electrical tape. Gray and red will be one group, and black and white is our other group. So gray is going to be our neutral for the pump circuit, and uh, red will be the hot for the pump circuit, and then black and white will be our receptacle circuit. We're going to grab our green because we need our ground. Yeah. Now we're also going to grab our black because our black is our outlet circuit. And we're going to pull off enough to go down and come right back up. And wow. loop the two. All right. So you want to feed. And we, we try not to make splices inside these. Yeah. Right. Right. Because it's pretty tight. Not enough room for wire nuts and such. It's legal in certain applications, but try not to. Then we'll just feed down. Now, when you put the uh, device in, do you s just take the insulation off the wire and loop it around the. the you know, there's kind of. Or do you cut it? I think what we'll probably go for. Just because it gives you, you're not, so you can either just cut it and uh, and then pigtail. So install pigtails yeah, for so each. Put a wire nut. Put a wire nut and then a wire out to each outlet. That means if you do that, now you're not relying on that outlet to carry that through. So say that one outlet fails, now you're not relying on that outlet to carry through the rest of the string. Right. 
So that's probably what we'll do. We want a minimum of six inches of wire. You have to have three inches of wire in the box along with three inches past the face of the box. All right. So say this box was, you need a minimum of three inches from where that wire enters the box, in the box, plus three inches past. But say your box is two feet deep, you would need a minimum of two feet of wire plus then three inches past. They want you to be yeah, able to pull three that inches device. Past that wire, that three box inches past. There. They want you to be able to pull that device yeah. out of the box. What he did here is he just measured out the wire, but he added a lot more to the green because the green is going to be a ground. Everything else is just passing through here. Because what we're pulling now is just for power to the pumps. Power to pumps and outlets. And the outlets. And then not, we're going to go to switching, switching yet. We're switching we're go will come to lighting away. next. All right. Pull the gray. Yep. Now we'll pull the rest of them. All right. We're good there. Now pull that green. There we go. Push this guy up. Got it. Okay. Okay, keep going. All right, we're good with all that. Um, let me take a little bit of green back this way since we have it, and then uh, we're good there. Through and our travelers. Travelers means it's involved with one of the three ways. Three ways. Well, we're going to a four way because we already went to a three way. Four ways going between three ways. This is where fish tape comes in when it is tough to pull through. Okay. That's the end of the breeze. So the white designates light? It, we're going to use that to designate our lighting because we don't have a million colors of wire. Oh. This, we are going to make this all one group because this is going to the forward mast as an auxiliary circuits. And then after we make that one group, then we're gonna come back and group our wire to what circuit is which. How the hell are we getting power to this? Uh, this SO cord <laughs> and a splice, the way I would have done it. It's the one that goes out there in the middle. Yeah. There's a T over there. Yeah, but the closest power where we have power pulled out is over there. Oh. So maybe what we'll end up doing is we're just extending this cable that's right fine. into that box. Yeah. Okay, yeah. that's fine. We talked about this before. Oh, okay, we did? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So we planned it this SO cord. So all the wire is pulled in. I would like to tell you that I could explain how to do this on video, but that's just not going to happen, okay? Because he does this in his head, and he just knows where to put the wire. So... Uh, for the rest of you, I would draw it out on paper. I would look at it six times and then I would start pulling it in carefully. Um, it's gonna take you more than four hours, which is what it took him to do this. Another beautiful day in Oklahoma. Cool autumn weather. And a lot of outlets, you can just stick the wire under and screw it down. Right. When you can't do that, what you do is you strip a little bit off and then you take and you strip just a little bit more, but you leave that on there. When you leave that on there, that keeps all the strands together. Then you can just wrap it right around and screw it. There you go. If we want to, reuse the gold. I don't know if they really care that much. I mean, they've only been in there for a couple years. So the pump has three wires and the float switch has two. And what we're going to do is put the uh, wires in here with a three way switch. So if the float switch doesn't work, we can flip that switch on there and override it. So here's a three-way switch and maybe a picture would help. Here's a picture. Okay, it's really just, you know, power coming to a light bulb and the neutral going back. But there's two more wires involved on three-way. So there's two wires there, two here, and two here. And all that's happening is the power can be supplied through one or the other. This is a single pole dual throw switch. And it's got one lever and it can be over there, it can be over here. So power comes in on one and it can go out either of the others. And when it gets in the middle, it's a little different. It's a four-way switch because 
uh, you need two paths for the, the power to go through. So it's either feeding through on this side or it's feeding through on this side, depending on where that switch is placed. And so you can add as many of these as you like, and that gives you the ability to have a whole bunch of different places where one thing's turned on or off. And on a pump, all we're doing is we're saying, okay, we're going to feed power down to the switch on the pump, the automatic switch, and we're going to bring it up through this path. And then we're going to have power come in through this path all the time. And the position of the switch just depends. Is, is it going to get it from the switch or is it going to get it, yeah, anytime we want it. So that makes it an automatic pump or manually override pump is always going to be on. So at a quick view, it's complicated. If you take the time to look at it a bit and think of it like water, it's called current anyway. You know, you watch how the current flows through the wires and how the switch is diverted from one canal to the other. And it's pretty easy. We're swapping out our 220 for a 220 with a neutral and ground, not just a ground. Harbor Freight pneumatic rivet gun. A thing of joy. This is the new neutral going to the neutral. receptacle. So when I plug into it, I got neutral and ground. And what's the problem with it? Because you got that bolted to that and that bolted to that. They're but not this connected? Is not, this is isolated. Oh, it's isolated. So why and is it isolated? Because generator, it's isolated. Because on a too. panel, they're not isolated. They're, they're not isolated because you put a bonding screw in. You bond them together. Okay, so to why aren't they bonded here? The same. So why aren't they bonded here? So with this application, they might be bonded inside that generator head. There's a chance. Okay, so why do I need neutral? You need neutral because it's what carries the current back from the hot. But the ground, ground does that is too. is redundant. It's just a safety thing. It's then. a safety thing. But you also really don't want to be carrying current on your ground in a boat. That's not good. Oh look, it even has our logo on it. Oh boy, branding. Branding. Oh, yeah, I've looked in here before. Why is that in there? Well, that's because it's where you always should put the manual. It helps fuel the fire when the short end. <laughs> I was just going to say <laughs> Yeah, 42 amps. So, neutral's tied to neutral. Ground is tied to ground. Ground. Oh, yeah, so neutral and ground are bonded here. Okay. So, at this location, neutral and ground are bonded. Okay, so why are they separate over in the box? Because, so in your panel in your house, right? Right. You know that green screw you you put in? Yeah. That's where they bond. This is the same thing as that green screw. Then the rest of the house is supposed to stay separate because that ground is supposed to be an alternative path. So back. you only bond them in one you place. You bond them in one place. Okay. So that this generator is bonded. Right. In your solar inverters, they'll probably be bonded also. Right. And then inside the VMAC, we're going to want to bond them. So usually generators are bonded. I don't know what this generator came from, but obviously they did it correctly. Cool. So. Custom. You can reach the screws. <laughs> okay. All back together and happy. And we even wired in our little voltage and hertz meter. All right. Good morning. We're adding the big... Somebody donated these. I don't remember who you are, but... Now that he's here and appreciates these, I appreciate them a hell of a lot more. These are, these are, they're not, they're 220, but they're also, um, 12240 volt. What'd you say? They're 12240. 12240, but they have the neutral and the ground and all that stuff in them. They are very expensive. They have, these ones have little cams that you got to turn and then you can open it up. And, uh, you know, for the, we call this piece, the wiring, the cord grip, cord grip. And then, uh, you know, you got nice. This must come back. Yeah, it does. Okay, see? Look at that. I just love things like that. Screw terminals there. I can even use those. Everybody, you got to get these things really tight. All the electricians seem to be really interested in that. Nice uh, on the on the cord, right? Good connections. Mm -hmm. And uh, so this is going to be, we're going to kind of run a power cord from the generators to the, um, oh. yeah, to the electrical panel that he installed in the boat. It's also where we can run uh, power from the generator out the, you know, up onto deck or over to another boat or something like that. So it's kind of like it is a big extension cord between our generators and our and our uh, electrical panels so that uh, we can be flexible with it. So these are making that happen. This is a Hubble and what's this one? This is an Arrow Heart. Different brand. Different brand. Show them how that one comes apart because they make fun of uh, newbies. So you got, see the cord grip has this little thing that sticks down in there. You can't take it apart. Yeah. Take the and then push together push and, push. and twist. Not intuitive. Yeah. 
you like giving that to the new guys to make them feel stupid, don't you? It could be fun. So like this is the cable that he's made up to do the VMAC. So we can plug the VMAC into the boat's power panel. And then there'll be another one for plugging in the, uh, the 10K there. Yep, another cable for plugging in the 10K generator. And then one more cable that's an extension cable. That's twist lock on both sides. And then Doug's cheater cable to go from the boat yard outlets yeah. to plug the boat in. Yeah. And we scored a big chunk of brass uh, flat bar from uh, Whitey's Pawn Shop over in Sand Springs. 100 bucks is what he actually charged me for 26 pounds of this stuff. Great price. It also makes good backing bar for welding aluminum, that sort of thing. But we're going to, uh, well, I don't know what I'm going to do with the rest of it. We're going to start off by cutting some slivers out of this and making bus bars for connecting batteries and such together. But that's that's coming up. This is our VMAC welder, generator, hydraulic pump, air pump. And we're going to replace one of the plugs in it. Cause once again, Chris isn't happy with that why there's no neutral on it no, no neutral problem. so that's what's coming out this is what's going in yeah the bus bar is right there to connect it to mesh grip is what we call them that's mesh grip yeah there's stainless steel cable you can hang on it it won't break okay well, that is a little wire gland for lighting wire I've been using those for wire strippers and Chris's stuff is a lot better but his stuff is way too expensive so I'm going to go with this this is a Klein tool he picked out it's supposed to stay sharp 11 bucks I can drop in the water but I just love his Nipix uh, diagonal cutters high leverage they got long handles on them those are lovely so I'm gonna do that too there's uh, links to this in our uh, description help yourself Thank you for supporting us. And after he snips it off and joins them together, that's what it looks like. He's pulling out the day. I'm sure as hell not going to let him go until he finishes this one too. I have no clue. <laughs> it's all alive. Don't stick my fingers in it anymore. Yeah. If the breaker's off, don't turn it on. It is the reason why it's off. Thing of beauty. Totally. So uh, I shouldn't tip the uh, no. Because these are outlets. No, these two are your pumps. Oh, okay. Which pump ones are the pump I was messing on? Because I need a good test. There's one of these two. I can't remember. I can't turn both of them on. Well, you can. Everything's wired on it. Okay. Pumps are on. Yeah. Okay. And then anything and else is. It, it's going? got wire that's not landed yet. Right. So, like, this is your solar. That's right. just a cable. Cable is hanging up there, yeah. And this is on. This, this is, is your generator input because which it's is on giving plug. you shore power. Right. That's giving you shore power. There's your water maker stuff right there. Okay. Yeah. The 220. We're going to re rewire that pump for 220. And that's the control circuit for it. Yep. Okay. And then you got welding outlets there. There's another welding outlet there. That's a 120, 240 outlet. Okay. Whole bunch of outlet circuits here, but all those are off because there's no right, outlets in yet. Yeah, I'll do the outlets. And then uh, this will be your pilot house lights. Okay. This is your. Uh, and you got all that written down. Yeah, this is your forward cabin and your uh, and your cargo hold lights. This is your engine room and your aft cabin lights. Cool. It is sweet, man. And then everything's labeled up. I've got my spares up there. That is perfect. All right, I actually wired up one pump out here. And I'll show that to you. What happens is red comes in hot, right? And see that white connected to the red? That goes down to the float switch and comes back on this black. That black might be hot depending on the float switch. And it goes to one side of the three way at the bottom. The other side is just coming off of that red that came in. It's pigtails off there and goes down to the other side of the switch so the position of the switch just decides which side of those comes up to this black wire and that goes back down to the pump so one way or the other we can control the pump right now I'm going to mount the switch like this so the down is in the auto mode and if I flip it to the up mode the pump comes on ain't that cool hey check this out huh all the lighting's done yeah and it's three-way switchy so you can go into here of course you wouldn't do it dark but here's the one at the bottom of the companion way try not to stick my fingers in there look at that very chic and many thanks to chris yeah there's one over there and then another one here and then let's see this one's here and the other one is down here huh look at that go into the aft cabin anyway i just love it so finally i'm not gonna have lights on cords anymore and we got the uh, the 220s on so tomorrow it's uh replace you know my redneck rig with uh, real outlets 
Yeah, everything in has a breaker. And so these are my extras. That's all your stuff for your pilot house. And pilot house, yeah. That's all. But they're not going to use house. that many for the pilot yeah, house. Are, are we? We got that many circuits? Stuff. Oh, that's true. Yeah, you got yeah. a lot for your kitchen. And there'll be some 220 here, too. Um, Pilot house? Yeah, for the stove, you we rewired it. Yes, we did. So, Fabulous. yeah. Have to plug one in for there. There you go, stove. Wonderful. Um, what do you call this channel up here? It's a gutter. Gutter. So we say goodbye to Chris. He's headed back to uh, Minnesota. Minnesota tonight and tomorrow. And uh, I, he leaves me to do the plugs. Yeah, receptacles. I'm trustworthy with that. And just absolutely loving this weather. It just gets cooler from here on out. You're gonna have to put a holster into this. Yeah, I know. I need a place to hang that thing. Pipe. Right. Yeah, that would be a good idea. Oh, we gotta close the bow hatch too. Oh, yeah. I need to put some. You see, I, I got gasket on it now, so maybe it won't leak rainwater down into there. And Chris is leaving with some extra supplies a little aluminum and some steel on the back of the truck there. Hardly compensation for all the copper wire I got out of him, but. Uh, start on that anyway. Yeah, you just gotta keep the thing right side up on the way home. Keep the bones buried. <laughs>